Father, we thank you for yet another year of Modern Sunday. Thank you for the grace to be alive. It takes your grace to be alive. Lord, we celebrate you and celebrate ourselves this morning. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, we want to hear from your throne. We pray you will speak to us. We pray you we will listen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Children of God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for his grace upon our lives. For good one year, he kept you alive. He kept me alive. It is not by our power, neither is by our mind. It takes the grace of God to see another day, let alone a full one year. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Yeah. After thanking God for his grace upon our lives, we want to celebrate the mothers this morning. Are there mothers in this house? Yeah. Oh, mother, oh, mother. See a beautiful star. Oh, mother. Oh, mother. See a lovely star. Oh, see a lovely mother. See a lovely mother. See a lovely mother. Children of God, praise the Lord. Begin to celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. What a glorious God. A wonderful creation. Women without women, the world cannot stand. So we celebrate ourselves this morning. Celebrate yourself this morning. Celebrate yourself this morning. Praise the Lord. Can we sit down comfortably? If nobody celebrates you, celebrate yourself. Praise the Lord. Come to think about it. Do you know that after God created the planet Earth, He created the man. He called the man, said, Name everything. And of course, man named everything. And God put the man in charge of everything to take care of. But this man was still not happy. With everything he had, God gave to him. God put the planet Earth in his palm and said, go. Man was not satisfied. Because there is something missing. Man became fulfilled when that single thing he needed was given to him. And that thing is you and I. That brings us to today's topic. All over the Church of Nigeria, we are looking at the theme, the Christian family. Praise the Lord. Before that, I want to say thank you to our daddy, the vicar, of course, the standing committee of the church, the executive, mother, senior, women's guild, guest guild, and of course, everybody here. God bless you in Jesus' name. And also, I will not forget my husband. Uh -huh. He is my crown. So I say thank you to him for the opportunity. I said the topic generally looking at this day, Modric Sunday, in Anglican Communion Church of Nigeria is the Christian family. And the Bible passage is taken from Proverbs chapter 4, 1 to 9. Proverbs chapter 4, 
verses 1 to 9. Proverbs 4, 1 to 9. If you are there, you can read for us. Proverbs chapter 4. Yes. Verses 1 to 9. Yes. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Yes. If I was my father's son, yes. tender and holy, beloved in the sight of my mother, mm-hmm. he taught me also and said unto me, Let the heart obtain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither be left from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all the getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou doest embrace her, she shall give to thee head and ornament of grace. A flag of glory shall she deliver to thee. Praise the Lord. Like I have said, that the theme for Church of Nigeria, as far as today is concerned, is the mother, the family, the Christian family. And where we have just read, we read from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. And that from there, we will draw a subtopic, a subtopic from where we have just read. And the subtopic is talking about the invitation from a father. The invitation from a father. An introduction. This morning, we are unlocking the power of Proverbs, walking in the wisdom of God. Solomon opens or begins the fourth chapter of Proverbs with an invitation. Invitation to instruction. Invitation to listen to instruction. Instruction of who? The instructions of the Father. Solomon happened to be the son of David. And do you know, David made a very made mistakes, even though the Bible called him the man after the heart of God. But he also, as human concern, he also made a lot of mistakes. So, Solomon learned a lot from his father. Now Solomon has grown up, he had to be a man. Now that he's a man, he has to learn from his father's mistakes. And he, would, he wouldn't want his children to fall back or to do the same mistake that the father did. So he had to instruct them. Listen to God's word. Listen to wisdom. Solomon became a better person and he was well equipped because the father taught him a lot. Praise the Lord. So I said, the theme for the Church of Nigeria Mondry Sunday is the Christian family. And I have to draw a sub theme from there, or a subtopic, an open invitation. Invitation from the Father to a son to listen to instructions. Praise God. Solomon, as we said, he drew from the mistakes of his father. He has proven to us now that to live the life of God is the best life on planet Earth. Praise God. He walks in the wisdom of God. He has a sincere desire to share this same wisdom that he had with his children. And he does so because he loves them. He does so because he loves his family. Father lost his son, just as our heavenly father lost us. If you look at the passages we read this morning, the episode that we read, and the gospel that we read, there is something we have to draw from there. The Bible told us of Moses going to God to bring the commandment. And at the end of the day, he read it to their hearing. And when Jesus Christ was being transfigured, the Bible also tells us that a voice came and said, this is my son. Listen to him. You can see the father 
God the Father himself and his children on planet Earth. So there is an instruction. There is talk. You see the conversation, the playlet given to us, conversation. You see there, the father never wanted to sat with the woman and say, ah, this work you are doing, you know, you know what I'm doing, he carry him, he go meet another person. Thank God for the other person that, who was able to point out to him that your wife works. There are many men today, if they come to meet you like that, what do you define yourself? You know, go over, put them for them. Many of them, they, they, they wait for you. They go even give you their money. Is it true or not? There is this heavenly father and son's father, uh, son relationship. God in heaven and his children on planet Earth. And that is why the voice came. This is my beloved son. Or do what? Listen to him. And in the Old Testament, you see Moses there representing going and coming, going and coming, giving instructions that they should obey. Beloved, the topic again, say, an open invitation to instructions. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. The Bible is a book about family. The Bible we have. It's a book about family. And it started right from Genesis. When God brought these animals and whatever for man to name, he said, there is no better half for him yet. He didn't get, tell him, go and multiply with all these animals. Did he tell him so? At the end of the day, he brought the woman and he said, both of you should go and do what? Multiply. Go, subdue the earth. Family has started. Family has started. And the Bible tells me why the man and the woman were in the garden of Eden. God come. God will come from heaven at the cool of the day. Conversation. Instructions. So there is this cordial relationship between man, between God and man. Now look at it from that angle. We have the, the God, the Father. Thereafter we have the father of the home who is representing God so all men that are here seated you are carry the resemblance of God all men that are here seated you are an ambassador of God to your family is somebody hearing what I'm saying this man an ambassador I think that was what Solomon saw knowing that he was an ambassador he needed to all represent God and how does he represent God? He had to give God the instructions of God to his children. He said, listen to instructions. An open instruction. An open invitation. Inviting you and I this morning to hear the instructions of our parents. Who is our parents here now? God. So the family, the Bible is all about a relationship. Now, the relationship continues. After we have the God, the Father, and the man. Or, when we say man, yeah, it means both man and woman. The Bible always look at the man, use the word man to represent both man and the woman. So this relationship between God and man. Thereafter, he wants a relationship between husband and wife. Hmm? Relationship between husband and wife. Relationship between husband, wife, and children. Thank God for the passage we read this morning, all the Bible study we took this morning. The word of God is so complete that when we begin to walk with it, we will not stumble in life. We will not stumble in life. So relationship between the husband and wife, between father, mother, children, and of course, everybody in the home, are, except the father and the mother, are all children, are all members of the family. It is never God's intention for the lessons of parents to die with them. Did somebody hear what I say? It is never the wish of God for the lessons of parents to die with them. Whatever lessons you learned on planet Earth, forget it, everybody get their past. Nobody is a saint on planet Earth. You have your past, I have my past. 
If there is no past, there is no present. So God wants us, Solomon is, God is call, calling us, instructing us, giving us an open in, in, invitation to have a cordial relationship. This instruction from God through Solomon. A father who had a child out of wedlock. You don't want to tell it to your child so that it does not fall into the same pit you fall into. You are hiding it. It is not cordial. You must have it. You must tell it to your children. I must tell mine to my children. Mothers who have, in one way or the other, done one thing or the other in the past, don't hide it. Tell your gay child. The best friend you should have as a mother is your gay child and your children. Yes. That's the best friend that we should have. Tell them what they should know before people outside can come to tell them. We all have a past that we must relate to our children. So it is not God's wish that you die or I die with my lessons that I have learned or planted. Apart from all that, with the weight of knowledge you have, all we do today is to send our school children to school, send them to school, send them to school. Many go to school, they come back from school carrying certificate up and down, looking for one work or the other. And you as a father, you own a company, you could it all this while, introduce your son or your daughter to this company. You have not been able to tell them this is how this business is. You have not been able to say, when I finish, I give to the children. Your company is dying with you. Your weight of, of experience is dying with you. No. Nigeria is what it is today because parents have not been able to help themselves. I told a father one day I met who I went to visit somebody and he was telling me, eh, my this is that, my that is that, and that is that, and this. And I said, sir, wait a minute. Don't you have children? He said, yes. Ah. You are growing older if you don't know. How can you at this age, 56 plus, and you have a son that is up to 20 years, 25 years graduated, and your company is here and there, you know you are looking for one manager or the other. Oh, no, 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 no. No. It is never the will of God that you die with your weight of experience. Transfer. Somebody say transfer. transfer. What Solomon had, he transferred to his children. When God had covenant with Abraham, it is not with Abraham alone. It is with Abraham and his descendants. That's what God did. And in the same mode, God wants us to, what we have had as parents, to be transferred to our children. Let's look at some of these transfer made. We have Abraham, who was blessed naturally as a leader, and spiritually, he received God's blessings too. He transferred to Isaac. Isaac. Isaac, in turn, transferred to Jacob. Jacob, in turn, transferred to Joseph. Moses and Joshua. Leadership. Leadership. As I am now, I should be able to have people that will take over from me, whether biological children or not. I should live a life. I should equip the women are coming after me. They passed up. Thank God for God. I said, thank God for God. Pastor's wife all over worried houses today, Monty the pulpit. Time came, I told my Lord Bishop, I said, this cannot continue. How can a pastor's wife for a full year, no time to preach? Those who are, have listened to many messages now, those outside there, you think they can do it more than we are doing? I said, give us a day. 
Say, go and prepare your pastor's wife. I met with my pastor's wife, opportunity come back once. Tell yourself you can't do it. And they said they can't do it. I said, my Lord, I have prepared my women. Give us a day. He gave us Monday, Sunday. Sunday. We will still press forward. We will still press forward. Transfer. Transfer. My vicar, sir. These ones that are after you, follow you, transfer. And we who are following him, be ready. You know one problem with our children today? They look at whatever we are doing as updated. Is that not why you are carrying your certificate up or down? You, you, when it's supposed to be your gag, pata, pata, carry certificate looking for somebody to give you a job. And your papa get one big job there. The manager where your papa they pay, they're not going to pay you where you did. Take time to watch all this. Uh, fil uh, fil uh, is it Philippines? All those they are thin. Oh, you see that a, a, fa a family will have a company. This one go and enter. This one come and enter. Fa com uh, family company. Family company. And they maintain it. Some parents have been able to do that, but their children squandered everything. So when you are children, you are hearing us here. The reason why some of you don't have job is because you are not ready to take over from your parents. I pray for you this morning. Be ready to take over from your parents in Jesus' name. So as we move on, God is a God of a family, a God of order, and a God whose desire is for us to instruct, instruct our children in a right way. We should pass our blessings to our children and in turn they will pass. Solomon learned Many lessons from his father David. Solomon had the benefit of being prepared and well equipped than his father. Now, how do we apply all this into our today life? How? God wants us to take every word that comes out of his mouth serious. You are yet seated. I am yet seated. Instruction is coming from God. True patience. That you should take his word very serious. Apply the word of God in your life. Make use of the word of God. Look at the passage again. He tells us, there are many passages in Proverbs. Solomon, Solomon really learned a lot. Solomon learned. He said, listen my son to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. Pay attention and get what? Understanding. Where are the children in this house? And many of us listen to our parents. A man that is sitting on the floor, that is 60 years, now you are as tall as Iroko tree. You know the seal. You have never seen something. You will look at it from your eyes that you are seeing more than your, your father. You can't see more than your parents. Years of experience, years he has stayed on planet Earth. He has seen a lot. So don't think that you will see mother your parents. The youth of today listen to your parents. Instructions. And parents be ready to listen to God. Hear the word of God. Follow the word of God. Teach it to your children. And you will see. He said, I give you sound learning. So, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and am only child of my mother, he taught me and said, lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will leave. Solomon speaking. He learned from his father. The father taught him a lot. Beloved, an open invitation to listen to instructions. Another thing he meant we must teach it to our children. We are applying what the word of God says today. Teach the word of God to your children. Teach it to your children. Have a family church. A father is a pastor of his house. The pastor's wife, the, the, the wife is the pastor's wife of that family. There is no family, there is no church. 
If there is no family, there is no church. We shouldn't leave this training of the children for, our, uh, for the school, secular school, or the church alone. You are the pastor of your home. Every man that is here seated, you are the pastor of your home. So you must teach this word of God. Solomon learned from his father. And again, he's teaching it to his children. This morning, he's also teaching it to us. If you read the book of Timothy, Paul was instructing Timothy. He said, I am very happy that the faith that was found in your grandmother was transferred to your mother. And from your mother to you now. You see, transfer of faith. What do we do at home? How do we live our lives? How do we live our lives? May God help us in Jesus' name. We must acknowledge God's role in our lives. We all have a part in our success. Quite all right. For you to succeed, for, for me to succeed. My, when my daughter was going to school, I said, daughter, sit down. And she sat down. I said, pick your barrel. She picked her barrel. I said, write 100%. And she write, wrote 100%. I said, now, begin to divide this 100%. God is 30. Daddy and mommy, 25. How many left? 45. I say, your lecturers, your friends, everybody around you, 5%. You are 40%. I say, have you written it? He said, yes. You go to school. From time to time, pick your diary and begin to look at it. You have a lot to play, a role to play for you to come out as you are going. To bring a certificate. And for your information, I am not going to depend on you when old age come home. I am going to depend on God. If God has been able to lead me to where I am, and he said, patience, you will see old age. This same God will feed me. So what you, we are doing now is for your good. It's for you to raise a family tomorrow. We have been raised, and we are raising you. You ought to raise your own family. The other one was going and said, sit down. The same thing I told your sister, you must look at. You have a part to play in your life. But God has his own. Look at the Bible. The Bible told us in Isaiah chapter 30. <clears throat> Isaiah 30 says, verses 1 down. He said, those who consult Egypt, who go to Egypt to make consultation? Or those who plan without putting God into it, they will have disgrace. So what are your plans in life? How have you been even raising your children? Number one way of raising children is to put them into the will of God. If they are in God, my beloved, you yourself go get peace. Is every parent in need of peace, yeah? You want to see your children succeed? Take them to God. It is not too late. It, with your niece, you can take your children to God. You can pull them from wherever they are. Now you born them. Where yeah, mama when they here? Begin not go go wayward now. Nah. Go and say you suck this breast now. This breast where you suck so. You not go go another place so. Now wait till I talk now I work for you. Not any other person. Because you came from me. I produce you. God put you. I am the incubator that carries you. God is the manufacturer, the, the scientist who manufactures you in his own laboratory in heaven. And he puts you into me. I am the incubator who incubated you. You took my blood. You ate from me. Walk by savoir vous. Pull them, mothers. Pull your children. So we must teach, God, to teach them the word of God. Again, know that the word of God is valid. It's valid. You can't do without the word of God. Again, we must apply this word of God in our day-to-day -day lives. Proverbs 8, 34 to 35 says, Blessed is the man who listens to God. Whoever finds life, finds God, finds what? Life. Beloved, God is calling on us today 
through Solomon to build a healthy Christian home. A healthy Christian home is a home that lies, that leads up to, leads up with the biblical principle. And it's a one that everybody in the home understood their duty. A biblical Christian home is a home where the father knows his duty. The mother knows and the children know. That takes us to the role of the father. What are the roles of the father? Number one role of the father is for you to love your wife. You must love your wife. That's what the word of God says. We sat here this morning and we listened to the Bible study. Not until you see that your wife, when you marry, so now you, now you be that too. Your wife, now you. Somebody hear me so? Your wife, now you. Not another person, now you. If you don't love her, you don't love yourself. And if you don't love her, you are disobeying God. Bible says make you love her. No matter how she be now, if you don't hold her, love her. Because you're not old when you marry her. Now, kill your boss, now you take marry her. You must again, to add to that, you must provide for your family. See, if you, whether man like him or not, women will farm on you. Now you be the farm. Now you. What the Bible talk? He say your desire shall be for all your, from your husband. So what do you want to talk? Now your will, now your duty to provide. This year when I wear so, Christian, you must buy. Now your duty, provide the Ephesians 5.22. Provide for us. And your duty to provide for us. Now your duty, whether you like it or not, provide for us, I beg. Provide for us. Somebody say, provide for us. Provide for us. Uh -huh. Women, don't they happy? Make caca away. Are they come? So we must make provision, eh? Men, fathers, make provision. Make provision. If you don't have, give, go to God. God, your word cannot lie now. You said I should provide for my family. If I don't provide for my family, I am worse than an infidels. Is that not what the word of God says? So God, I want. Give me. Make I give him. He go give you. You go give us. First Timothy 5, 8. He says, if you can't provide for your family, you are not a Christian. No? All right. Another role of the man is to submit yourself to your wife. You understand what I mean now? You know what? Some men today, once women just do anything, they don't lock up. In those days, it used to be women locking up. Today, I am a counselor now. Today, men lock up more than women. You know why? Some of them get... Never you lock up, oh. Don't, lock. man, not lock up. Eh? Not lock up, may they not rape you. If you lock up. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Women, look at your roles. Women, we live in a society. <laughs> may God help us. Somebody says, submit. submit. Women, your primary duty is to submit to your husband. Yes, we are in a society where we have women that are highly placed. No matter how highly placed you are, over your husband, the Bible still stands. You must come down to the level of your husband. You must respect your husband. You must give him all his due respect, no matter the qualification you carry. No matter. So women that are here, if you are a woman, you are not respecting your husband, you are disappointing God. You are not representing God. We don't follow the society. Equal agenda. Eh? No, when it comes to the Bible, you must submit. Submission. Ephesians told us, chapter 5, submit to your husband. In all things lawful. In what? It must be in accordance. So the Bible is a basis of our submission. 
Any submission aside the will of God cannot stand on you men. Make one read. Listen. Because we don't hear many things. Not to hear we won't talk there. Other duties of the wife is to make sure that the kitchen is ready, the dining is ready, and the bed is ready. The dining is ready, and the bed is ready. You understand? Now, don't be a naggy woman. Don't be a naggy woman. Mothers, mothers that are here, never you nag. Many women are out, always complaining, 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 making their husband to run away. We are in a society where the financial, uh, the finances of the man, most men, mm, most men, what we, our husbands generate are not enough to cater for the home. So the Bible says, submit. Your finance must come. This is where a woman should be industrious. Yes, the man is saying the woman is not working here in the playlet. The woman works. But by the time all this work for us, no feed they provide the food for the table. Wahala. So every woman should go back to Proverbs 31. Turn down. There are too many lazy women, of course. Don't base, your, don't, don't base that on the playlet we uttered this morning and say, I know they cook, I know they do this, I know they do. That one not rich for this world where we do. You not rich. Oh. Go look for something to do. Carry tomato, sell. Some women are too proud to carry something. A woman came and said she needed something. I said, okay, women walk out, can you meet with this woman? She said she wants to do something. What do you want to do? He said, I want to open store, I want to do this. Okay, can we give you small things so that you go and look for it? Is there not other kind of market you want to? You won't go open big stock. Keep the Bible now. We had the money day. I said, Madam, who I be? He said, You'll be bishop wife. I'll be bishop wife. Oh. I the work. Oh. I need my own personal money. That's my social security. I need it. I said, come with me to the backyard and see my fish pond. If you reach where they dry fish, they say, you're not going to believe your two eyes. You, not, not when you see me like this, Abibi, come meet me for house now. You sit down, finish, you say, make all them bring, come make you eat. Where your husband? He said, he don't come out. What did they do? He said, they do keke riding. Three of one week now, in over I said, oh, girl, you're not going to call. You know, go come. As the man go right, keke, you enter market, you sell tomatoes. Thank God for a good market. You'll see two people will go share one, bag, uh, one basket. Go hawk and come back. And you go see the one where you go take cook. Before he come from, if he food already, where you see money take, say, I go sell tomatoes. So, okay, me, I still bring this one, come. Not be so be lie. What did they talk? What did they talk? You won't kill the man. So you must do something. Women, do something. Do something. And again, she said, I, the, the lady there said, I am the manager of the home. Yes. Manage the home where? Where your power not reach, not go there because your friend, children, they go higher, go big school. You say you won't put your children for big school. School near your house there. You they transport every day. They carry picky go, carry a compa, carry a go, carry a compa. On um, that one, eh? Na na penny wise and pa foolish. Put your picky near the school when it's dead there. Ah, all of us now we have we've even go school before. Where did we see? Nigeria, where did we see? Do not depend on your husband, people. I get one, my husband get one brother. You know they care for us. So. Your husband brother get you, no. I get one sister. Oh. The sister not they care for me. Oh. The your sister get you, wahala. Tell yourself, say, I must make it. Now to us children, we have our duties. 
Every child in the home must obey the father and the mother. Everybody in the home, drivers included, you are a member of the family. Has help included, you are a member of the family. Obey your leaders. Obey the family head of the home and the assistant pastor there. The pastor of the home, I said, is the man, and the woman is assistant pastor. You must obey your pastors. You must listen to them. Children, you must listen to your parents. You must listen to them so that you will succeed in life. The too many young deaths today, is one of the reasons is because children don't obey their parents. Obey your parents. Listen to them. And in all things lawful, the Bible is the basis of this obedience. Anything outside the word of God must not go. Must not go at all. We must listen to their instructions. That's the theme, the subtopic. Proverbs 23, 22. You will see it there. We must know and bear in mind that responsibility await us. Is somebody hearing me? Are the children and the youth in this house responsibilities are awaiting you. The Bible says your generation awaits you to manifest. What are you going to manifest? You see us today, we jump up, up, up and down. You see mama worry, moving and counting one step or the other. Tomorrow, mama worry need another leg. And that leg happens to be the children. As your mother is sitting here, your father seated here, oh my beloved, they are moving up and down now. They have been caring for you. They are expecting you are going to be their farm tomorrow. And I'm telling you, that's the word of God. The Bible says a widow who has children, the children should be able to care for them. Not just widow. Old age, they wait. Old age, they come. I'm not going to jump like this. I go come out, I go sit down. Somebody will need to lead me and give me food. The same way with your parents. Where are the youths? Where are the children? Your fathers are waiting for you. Your mothers are waiting for you. You have a responsibility awaiting for you. Now you are going to carry two responsibilities because we are in Africa. Afri in Africa, is not just immediate family. Come to my house and you see multitude of people. This one calling from here, this one. I'll be this person. I'll be this person. I won't come stay with you. You go say no. That's where we are. Come. They are your immediate family is waiting for you. Especially you may. Your immediate family is waiting for you. Your grandma, your mama, your husband, your wife, mama, they wait for you. Your mama, they wait for you. Your papa, they wait for you. Your children, they wait for you. And thereafter, people around you, and when you draw your budget, you'll just see something for comfort. Oh, God, I don't put you for this agenda. Oh. But this is Africa. You must help. May the God of heaven help us in Jesus' name. Can we stand up as we pray? The wicked died and disappeared, but the family of the godly stands firm. That's Proverbs 12, verse 7. We must desire to stand as a family because that is God's plan for us. Father, we thank you because you have spoken this morning. The Christian family. And from it, we saw that Proverbs told us Solomon is inviting us that we should listen, we should obey instructions. That he himself obeyed his father's instructions. And now today is where to do. And when we obey our parents' instructions, then it will be well with us. Instructions here have to be we be children and God being our father. So we parents must listen and draw from our, our father who is God. And when we draw from our father, we will now in turn speak to our children. And our children will in turn become good children. Lord, let this be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, are there homes that are in chapels now? Are there homes where there are disarray? Are there homes that are separated? Today be Monday Sunday. Lord, let your love bring them together again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are there people who are already old and their children are not standing yet? Oh God. Because this message came today, let there be a turnaround in the life of those children. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Father and my God, are there young homes that are coming, young family 
Lord, may they base their marriage in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are praying that as we saw ourselves today, and we are happy, may we see ourselves like this next year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 